In this lecture, we'll look at the basic concepts and notations of set theory. Set theory is important not only because it's one of the foundations of modern maths, but also features widely in economics. In most economic models, we assume that agents optimize. That is, they make the best choice from a feasible set of alternatives. A set is a collection of objects that are called the elements or the members of the set. Usually we list the elements of a set within a pair of curly brackets called braces. For example, the students enrolled in economics. We use this epsilon symbol to indicate that an object, in this case little s, is a member of set uppercase s. The same symbol with a line through it indicates that an object is not a member of a set. Here, object A is not a member of set S. We can define a subset of members of a set, for example, economic students who are female. We represent that symbolically like this, where we read that as B is a subset of S. Another example is that the set of natural numbers, counting numbers, is a subset of all integers. Here we have a summary of the notation so far. We also have two new symbols. Here we have a combination of the subset symbol plus the equal sign. So this indicates that set A is not only a subset of B, but it also could equal B, so it'd be the same as it. This is the symbol in our textbook, but otherwise it's not very commonly used. We'll stick with this symbol here. That's the one that's mainly used. We can also specify that a set has no elements. This is the null set or the empty set. Since all sets without members are the same set, mathematicians call this the empty set. More formally, we describe a set in terms of a typical member of the set. X is a typical element. Next we have a colon, and then we have the properties of the set. The properties of an element of this set are that it is a natural number, and that it is greater than seven. We read this as the set of X such that X is a natural number, and X is greater than seven. Now let's look at combinations of sets. This upside down U is the symbol for the intersection of two sets A and B. I'm sure you're all familiar with the Venn diagram. So the intersection of A and B is where those two sets overlap on the Venn diagram. It's the subset of elements that belong to both A and B. We have it in more formal notation here. Disjoint sets are mutually exclusive. They don't have any common elements and do not uh, overlap on the Venn diagram. So if we have a set C there, we would say that A and C is the null set, an empty set. We define the union of two sets with a symbol that looks like this. Naturally enough, it looks like uh, a U. An element of the union of A and B an element of A union B belongs to A or B or both. It's represented by the orange area in the Venn diagram. Formally, the set of X such that uh, X is a member of A or X is a member of B. We can also define a set such that the members belong to one set but not another. So that's A minus B or symbolically A backslash B. So A minus B is this orange area here. So they're the elements that belong to A but not to B. We can also write that as A and not B, where B prime means not B. We talked earlier about the null set. We also have the concept of a universal set. The symbol for a universal set is the Greek letter omega. It's not literally the set of everything. It's the set of everything that's of interest in a particular instance. 
So we define a universal set for each problem we have. For example, if we're considering students, the universal set might be all current UQ students. If we have a set A and a universal set omega, then the complement of A is the set of elements of omega that don't belong to A. We have various symbols for a complement, A prime, CA, omega not A, A tilde, or A bar. Here we have a summary of some of the notation that we've discussed. Finally, just for completion, let's consider convex and non-convex sets. We can represent these concepts best diagrammatically. If we have a set and take a pair of points within the set, say A and B, and join them by a line segment, then if every point on that line segment lies within the set, then we have a convex set. If some points in the line segment lie outside the set, like here or here, then we have non-convex sets. Now we have two examples. Either try these out for yourself or go directly to the example videos.